Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to share with you how you can easily turn the March 2020 sheet load of cards into 12 cards instead of the original 9. I hope you'll stick around and find out how. I want to say a great big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers. And if this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. Like I mentioned in the intro today, I'm going to be showing you how you can easily turn nine cards from the March 2020 sheet load of cards into 12. And the only thing that you have to add is three card bases. The pattern paper and the cardstock otherwise stay exactly the same. Also for today's cards, I'm going to be using different cut aparts from the collection I chose for the sentiments. One thing that you will notice different with the cards that I'm going to create today is that they will all look the same. The way that I originally had you cut and put the paper together, you would get a set of cards like this where they all look a little bit different because you mix and match the papers. If you haven't seen how I made the set in front of you, I will have the video linked below. I shared with you how I foil any stamp that you have without needing the mink toner ink. All of the pattern papers that I'm going to be using today come from the Coastal Cove paper pad, which is a hot buy at Michael's. If you get lucky, you might still be able to find some in your local store. I did already pre-select the three papers, and then of course I got out those cut aparts for the sentiments. Another thing I'm kind of switching up today is I will be using vellum for CS3. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. If you have any questions that aren't answered, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. In front of me are the three pieces that I will be cutting on camera today. Now this left one, you will notice that I actually used a different paper for the final cards. This is because I started making these and then I started thinking, well, maybe my viewers would like to see how to make the 12 cards. So I stopped, but I only had one piece of that boat paper. I will be cutting this first piece to the size of piece A on the sheet load cutting guides. So that means that I will be cutting this into strips that are three inches tall. Later, this paper will be represented by that boat paper and will be the top of each of the cards. Once I have those strips cut down, I doubled those up and I cut them to four inches wide. So that will yield me 12 pieces with the lighthouses on them. The next piece of paper will be cut to the size of piece B. So this is very similar to the piece I just cut, except instead of making three inch tall strips, I will be making two inch tall strips. And I actually push these through from right to left, and I use the two inch measurement on the left of my trimmer. And again, I double these up and cut them to four inches wide. And finally, this last piece of pattern paper will get cut to the same size as piece C. So I cut my four and a half inch wide strip and then I proceed to push it down to that one inch mark to the left of my cutting guide until I have 12 pieces. So this will only take this one strip and you'll see here at the end that there's not gonna be room for my fingers. So I pulled out a piece of my Scotch blue removable tape lined up my paper at the one inch mark, then temporarily tacked it down so I could make that cut. And this tape does not harm the front of the pattern paper at all. While I still had my cutter out, I got out the cut apart pages from the paper collection and started cutting out some of the pieces that I thought might make good sentiments for my cards later. Off camera, I don't show you, but I did end up just choosing 12 of these, but I did cut a lot more in the beginning. 
Like I mentioned before, I will be using vellum for the CS3 piece. So I got out a new sheet and I cut it into two strips of four and a half inches and then I cut it down to the final size. Now I'm not gonna go over all the dimensions in this video. If you're interested in downloading the printable for yourself, you just have to be a subscriber and it is free. I will have the video linked below where you can go find out how to do that. I have already shown in previous videos how to start assembling the cards, but I thought that I would go ahead and leave one unassembled so I could show you on camera. The piece A is always going to go on the top, piece B is at the bottom. Now there is a gap between the two and that's okay because when you map piece C with that vellum strip, it covers that up. And here's where you'll really notice that all of the backgrounds look the same versus the other sets that I've been creating. Since I won't be using other cardstocks for my sentiments, I wanted to pause the video kind of here and just explain to you how you can still get all of your sentiment squares from the original amount of cardstock. On CS2, there is enough room at the bottom to cut one more set of three pieces, and that is the same as with the CS1. The only thing you do need to add for cardstock would be three more card bases. Here is a look at the final cut aparts that I chose for my cards. Some of them, like the ones on the right, I don't have to add anything to, but the ones on the left, I will be altering just a little bit. Since this first card has a porthole on it, I thought it would be fun to make that into a real window. So I got out my two inch circle punch, did my best to center that in there, and then I'm going to go ahead and map that with vellum, just like with that center strip. Now the fun thing about this is that you'll be able to see the paper from the card behind that portal just a little bit through that vellum window. For these next few cards, I'm going to be stamping some sentiments onto them since they're decorated nicely but they don't have a message. For this first one, I pulled out an old paper pumpkin stamp set, and if you'll notice these pockets I'm using, I uploaded a video recently where I share with you how I store my stamps from the kits after I use them. I'll have that linked below if you want to check it out. The sentiment I chose for this one was, you make me so happy, because the top of the card said remember. All of these I will be stamping with Night of Navy ink from Stampin' Up. Now this next card, I'm going to cut off the right just a little bit so it hangs off the card front, so I place my sentiment more to the left. The stamp on this one is from Gina K Designs Grand Garden Stamp Set. For the third and fourth cards, I pulled out another old paper pumpkin kit, and for this first one, the sentiment says, be kinder to yourself and let your kindness flood the world. I just thought that was real nice for the times we're in now. So many people are stepping up and going the extra mile. The second stamp that I'm using from this set reads, you're the reason I smiled today. And you'll notice that once I have this stamp inked up, I stamp it more to the right of this card. And that's because later I'm going to be trimming this down to more of a tall, skinny strip. You'll see that right here. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to be cutting a little bit off the right side of this You've Been On My Mind piece. I just marked that with my fingernail where I thought it looked good and sliced that excess off. Once all of the focal points were ready, I then started putting those onto scraps of vellum and I just tried to make sure that when I go later to cut down these pieces that they could all have nice even borders. This is the second card set I've made where I matted some of the pieces in vellum. And the reason that I like this is it helps these cards stand out from the background, but it still allows you to see just a little bit of that pattern through the vellum. Once all of those have been trimmed out, 
I got out my foam squares from the Dollar Tree and started putting these on the back of each piece and adhering my focal points to the cards. Now depending on the size and shape of my focal point, I adjusted where it went on the card. And here in just a little bit, I will actually show you a close up of each of the finished cards so you can see more details. I hope that you enjoyed getting to see how I quickly turned the March 2020 sheet load of cards from 9 into 12. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget that if you want to download that file for free if you're a subscriber to my channel, I have that video linked in the description box below. I will be back on April 1st with a brand new sheet load of cards. Until then, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.